Hello and welcome to this first advanced Blitz Plus tutorial by Orange Moon Network. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to use arrays in Blitz and I will be using them in an RPG style game. So what we're going to try and create is a tiled based game where your character can run around and you can set what the background looks like without having to draw the whole map just creating a few different um, terrain types as tiles and then you can just repeat them throughout the game. Um, firstly I would just like to say sorry I haven't made any tutorials for a while um, so I just thought I would make some now to make everyone who's been wanting more happy so I start off with this tutorial showing you how to use an array. Now an array is in simple terms a variable which doesn't just store one value so usually when we create a game we use variables such as global arm. Uh, we have variables such as number and we set it as one value such as one. Whereas with an array you could give it ten different values so you might have number zero equals one but you'd also have number one and you give that a different number value so let's give this one ten and it basically works like this and then let's give number two a number such as 50 so these are all stored in variable number and you can say you have 10 different number values and then you'd refer to them as in your code you would say uh, number x so print say you're doing text based program print number x and if you set x to so say x equals 2 it would print the number 50 or if you want to do x equals 1 it will print the number 10 um, this isn't a real program by the way I'm just demonstrating how an array works and we'll be using this basic principle in our game so here I have the basic uh, graphic game layout which I've shown you in other tutorials so if you haven't seen them then check them out on my Orange Moon Network page on YouTube. Um, so now let's start creating the array. So after we set up the graphics where we usually put our variables we'll set up our array and we'll call it simply array. So you use the command dim which means for it means dimension because uh, for an array you can have different di dimensions. You don't just have to have an, away an array which does just one set of values. You can set uh, two different dimensions or more and I'll explain what a two dimensional array is so let's do dim array and in brackets you put how many you, um, different values you can store in this variable and we're going to do a multi dimensional array so we're going to have 13 and 10 and then you close the brackets so we're going to store 13 values going across and 10 values going down so these are basically x and y coordinates so in total there will be 130 different values and we are going to um, set them up as the different tiles so we're going to have 13 different tiles across and, 30 and 10 tiles down and we're going to have um, for this example I'll just use three different tiles so let's start inputting the where you want the different tiles so you type data and now we shall have um, <laughs> we'll have zeros across the top so of our three different tiles the first one will be called zero the second one will be called one and the third one will be called two so I want the top row to be all zeros and we have 13 across each one so we'll just do this 30 times 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 11, 12, 13. So that's, that would be a one dimensional array, but we've got a two dimensional array. So now we do it another 10 times. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got a basic map here. So this demonstrates what the different tiles will be. So currently, 
all the tiles would be the same. The reason I picked 13 is, and 10 is simply because the tiles I'm using will be 50 by 50 images, so this would fit the full screen and just go over it. So now, basically, you've got your own map creator around here. So, say I want to create a path that um, starts around here and then moves around here on the screen. Let's do use that as one. Um, and I'll put ones around here. So you can create this map however you want. We're just replacing the different numbers but keeping the arrangement the same. So we've got a nice little path there. I'll have it going this way as well. And now, because I'm using three different tiles, let's have a little lake or a little pond in the top. Yeah, it's probably more like a pond. Um, there. Um, so now that we've set up our array, we can now go and try and put these images onto the screen. So I will create a function called f draw tiles and we can create the function here function f draw tiles and I'm sorry I'm going on quite for a long time but it's best that I try and take my time explaining this so I hope you understand it well so what we're going to do now is try and draw our tiles so we're going to use a for loop so we type 4 and we'll go y equals 1 to 10 and we'll end that loop with a next. What this will do is it will go through this section here 10 times and each time the y value will go up by 1 so it'll start off as 1 and go to 10. Because this is a two dimensional array we will have another for loop for the x inside and x equals 1 to 13 because we're drawing it 13 times here. You can use your own values but might be easy if you just go along with what I'm doing. So now we'll end this for loop as well. So we've got the y loop and the x loop. And here we're going to load in the data. So what we will do is say read. So that will read all this data we've written. Uh, you don't have to do an array like this. This is just a particular type of array I've done. So you can see how it's laid out and it's much simpler to use. And for this type, we have to do read and then type array x y so it'll read um, what value we have put in t as the text here for each x and y coordinate of the array and now we can try and find out which tile we're going to draw so we'll say if array x y so the value of array x y will be whatever number is in whichever coordinate is currently going through the loop so it'll go through here ten times and each time it goes through here for y it will go through all thirteen different coordinates of the x each time it'll read this value and we're checking to see if this value is zero then we will want to draw image and I'll call it tile 1 and what we need to do for that first is up here before the loop we will set our tile so global for variable tile 1 equals load image and I've made a file called tile1.bmp so this is all things I've explained in previous tutorials like the different colors of the different commands and if statements. So if you are too confused by this or you've seen the old tutorials and you're still confused, go back and watch them again and hopefully you'll get a better understanding. So we want to draw this at the x and y coordinates, but we don't want to draw them um, 10 pixels down and 13 pixels across because that would be too small. So we'll draw them at the x coordinate, but we'll times it by 50 so that all the different um, tiles will spread out so they're not all clumped into the corner if you're confused don't worry you should understand it if I if you run it without putting the times 50 in we'll have y times 50 
and then we'll use ALSIF, which uh, you should already know. So else if the value of this coordinate is one, then we will we can just copy and paste this and draw tile two, and then else if array x y equals two, then we can draw tile three. Now we'll end if. And now, what we need to do is to draw our tiles. And that is what I will do in the next tutorial. I'll be showing you how we put the tiles in the game and go through the running process and debug and all these things. So, <laughs> sorry I've gone on for quite a long time, but as I said, I want to take it easy. Um, and I hope you've been patient waiting and thank you for waiting for my new tutorials. Um, so stay tuned, the next tutorial will be on here somewhere if you have your annotations enabled. See you next